Hi everyone, I'm Arvazir and welcome to the Banner Saga 2. So, if you don't know, the Banner Saga is a tactical turn-based strategy slash RPG. And this is the second part of a trilogy. Now, I didn't actually play the first one, but I know what the story is all about. However, for those of you who don't, there's a recap available. So, we are going to watch the recap. When the sun stopped in the sky, life continued as normal. Then the stone armored dredge reappeared. Ancient foes from the far northern reaches. And the world was thrown into chaos. Giant Varl defenders were slaughtered. Their strongholds destroyed. Now Hakon is the Varl king and protects who is left of his race. Rook, a humble hunter and father of Alette, found himself leading frightened clansmen towards safety. His caravan crossed paths with Juno and Ivand, two of the mysterious spellweavers known as Menders, who know something about the massive mountain-breaking serpent on the loose. In Borsgard, a town under the protection of the mercenary leader, Bolverk. Both Varl and human stood against a dredge general. The immortal Sundan, known as Bellower. Juno devised a way to stop Bellower. But it cost the life of one held dear. The saga continues. Alright, so that's that. That was the recap. Let's get started. So, we can choose between Rook and Arlette. And they will both have a different story then. Because basically, the person that died, that you saw in the recap, was either Rook or Arlette. And based on which hero you choose, the other one will be dead. So, Arlette. Since the tragic events at Borsgard, the families of the caravan look to Alette, daughter of Rook, the former leader to guide them. Though young, her compassion for others and ability with a bow have impressed all but the most stubborn clan leaders, calling on her personal resolve and lifetime friendships with the archer Odelief and the massive Varl Ivor, Alette must continue her father's work of seeing their caravan to the safety of the distant capital city, Aberang. Okay, so that's Alette and Rook. Overcome with grief from the death of his daughter at the Battle of Borsgard, Rook, a skilled hunter and proven leader, wonders why anyone would still follow his lead. With the help of a lifelong friend, the giant Varl Ivar, perhaps he can change the tragic pattern of losing those who depend on him to ensure the caravan's safety on the long journey to the human capital, Aberang. Okay, let's go with Rook. Tíminn líður áfram, eins og ströng þung á sem fleytir okkur áfram. Time continues washing over us, moment after moment, like waves on a coast. Some more fierce, more violent than others. So few of my kind, the giant war, remain alive. Even so, I find myself wondering if humans, while able to bear children, suffer more for the loss of loved ones. Several weeks have passed since we slew the Sunder known as Bellower, but the chaos of the world did not wither as we hoped. The world is breaking. We sail aboard hastily crafted ships for the safety of Arborain, the human capital. But the river curses us with a clear view of the dreads, assaulting another hopeless spirits. And here we are. 
with some dredge attacking us. Move away from those glowing rocks. This one's mine. Yep. Rip. That didn't go so well for them. No, no, to the depths with you. He's still alive. Keep killing them. Dummy Rook, quit running ahead. Drag around the screen to see your surroundings. Click check mark to continue. Right, so there is a tutorial for anyone who didn't play the first game. That's good. These portraits show the order of initiative, taking turns from left to right. Your heroes are blue, the enemy is red. It's your turn to act. Movement happens before action. This ring shows that Ivor is active. The blue tiles around him show where he can move. Some heroes feel more tiles than others. The horned heroes are a race of giants called Varl, who take up four tiles each, while humans feel a single tile. This can have huge impact on your strategy. Click the tile you want to move to and then click the check mark to confirm. Move Ivor to get him into attack range. Alright. To target the enemy, click the tile on which they stand. Heroes' tiles are blown, the enemies are red. Target this enemy now by clicking this tile. You can choose to either attack the enemy's strength or break his armor. The numbers beneath each icon, 2 and 8, show the damage you will do to that stat. Okay? Strength counts as both health and damage. A loss of 8 strength means the character will now do 8 less damage. If strength falls to 0, the character falls in battle. Okay, so it's both strength and attack power, or whatever you want to call it. Armor blocks strength damage, but can be reduced by a break attack. By breaking armor, you open the map to take more damage in the future. Okay? This enemy only has 7 strength remaining. A strength attack will kill it. Click the red fist icon now to attack his strength, then confirm your choice. Alright? So 8 damage. And he's dead. Plus 1 renown. He's down. Each time you make a kill, your renown grows, which is used later to improve your characters. Without an enemy to reach, this dredge grunt will choose to smash the obstacle in his way. Obstacles on the combat board will make you change tactics, so plan wisely to make them work to your benefit. Okay. Now it's Hakon's turn. He appears to be out of range of these enemies, but all heroes can use willpower to boost their actions. By clicking on gold tiles, the hero can move further than usual, at the cost of one willpower for each step that includes a gold tile. Red pulsing tiles beneath your enemy show how close you'll have to get to be in range. Move Hakon into attack range now. So this right here is willpower, yep. Okay. Let's move in then. Like so. Clicking your hero's style at any time will also bring up all his combat options, including move, ability, attack and end turn. Standard attacks only affect a single enemy, but Hakon has a special ability that gives him a unique advantage. Click Hakon's purple ability to access his ability now. Sundering impact. The ability description appears in the tooltips below. Hakon's Sundering Impact allows him to hit so hard that multiple adjacent tiles take damage on every hit. Okay, that's nice. Select the enemy style and then confirm your choice to hit them hard with Sundering Impact. Okay, so which one do we want to hit then? Will it make a difference? 100% to hit, strength damage plus one, plus one break to target. One break added to heavy impact. This guy has 9 armor. I guess the game wants us to hit the one on the left. Okay. There. Plus one renown. A powerful strike. When there is only one enemy left, heroes enter pillage mode. During pillage, each hero moves in order, and there are no more guaranteed turns. 
check the initiative to see how the order has changed. Alright. So we'll get attacked first. One damage. If a character does not move on his turn, he can rest to regain one willpower. Alright. Looks like the dredge is in some trouble. Rook won't be able to finish the job with a normal attack, but willpower can be used to boost his damage. Click the dredge ground tile to attack. Click the red fist icon and then a star above the fist icon to add willpower to the attack. The number of stars available each turn are determined by your exertion stat. You'll see the damage number go up as you add willpower. Click the star and then check mark to kill this enemy. Alright, like so. There's the stat. So that will kill it, like so. And that's the combat basics, I guess. Not finished. Okay, that's a lot of dudes. What are you doing exactly? What? Okay, are we supposed to kill all of them? Because that's a little bit strange. Well then. That's a little bit odd. But okay. If you say so. Well, we'll only do one damage. Because of his armor. Yeah, I'm not sure why we're fighting all of these guys all at the same time. <laughs> That's clearly not going to happen. Okay, well... Let's attack. Yeah, only one damage unless we break armor. We clearly won't beat them with just Rook. So I'm not sure what this is all about. I guess we are supposed to die here. And that's part of the story or something? A final blow directed at your head is deflected, and the giant horns slam into the dredge surrounding you. Ivor pulls you to your feet and away from combat as other fighters from your caravan rush in to finish off the enemy. Yeah, that was a little bit strange. Why would you rush them like that, alone? Ivor moves you past the crowd of worried villagers, ensuring you can stand on your own. I don't know what you were... He stops speaking as the village chieftain approaches. A war leader saving a human village from those things. Legends are made of much less. No war leader, just Ivor. Those things were dredge, like the stories you probably heard as a kid. And it was Rogue here who ordered us to stop. Forgive me, maybe it's this never setting sun or dredge or the deaths of so many of my clansmen. I'm not myself. The man's eyes appraise you, and he quickly nods. I'm Aleo, the Scald. Were you trying to drive the dredge all the way back north by yourself? I wouldn't stop there. We should get ready to leave, remain silent. Well, not much to say about that, really. The Scald looks back and forth between you and Ivor, unsure on how to proceed. So, Ivor, we heard rumors about the Sandra Bellower sucking boards guard. More than a rumor, but he's been dealt with. By... by your clan? Your Sundered Slayers? Damn right we are. The term makes Ivor wins and ends Aleo's excitement. But what about the deep shaking in the ground? Only yesterday, we felt a rumble like none before. You think we have all the answers? Could be the giant serpent? The serpent in the sun. Radormer, I'm no holy man, but joking about the dead. Gods feel wrong. About as opposite of Radomer as it gets, this one's determined to swallow us all. The Skald looks skeptical. Killing a Sander is a big enough tale on its own, for now. Then let's get ready to leave. Not to sound ungrateful, but this place is all we have. It's our home. We never should have stopped, not quietly. Don't be stupid. More dredge are coming. 
wanting to defend what's yours isn't stupid, you know that. I know this village lost fighters today, so they have less of a chance defending themselves tomorrow. Rocky's right, I hope their defeat here today would keep the dredge away, but when voiced, the skull looks around at the small huts of his village. Borsgard is the only other place I've seen in my life, this small village is all my family knows. Are things really as tragic as you're making them sound? Probably worse. Aleo looks back and forth between you and Ivor before nodding. Packing and tending to our dead will take some time, but I'll have everyone on their ships soon. Aleo heads off to the village to organize supplies. People thinking we're heroes now? The world is breaking in more ways than one. Ivor, one of the giants known as Varro, has fought Dredge in the northern winters, personally killed the Thunder Rays, and lost an arm to the Thunder Bellower. He has been at your side through everything, including the death of your daughter. Now you feel the weight of his full attention. Ivor, was you pulled out there, fighting the dredge alone? Was that tied to Aled at all? They'll pay for taking her from me, don't mention her name, I'm trying my best to hold it all together. The villagers could probably use your strength. Well, I'm trying my best to hold it all together. Keep holding it all in, and you'll lose it when these people need you most. Alette was my reason for living after all this died. I remember, but make this caravan your reason now. There's still plenty for you to do. He walks towards the village, leaving you alone with your thoughts. All right. The Bannered Saga 2. Okay, so I guess that was the prologue mission, or whatever you want to call it. Alright, fair enough. Chapter 8. From their homes must all flee. And here we are. The traveling merchants are surprisingly well stocked. Obin the old var. Dub the Scrivener says. Since Borsgard, our numbers have grown. People have scavenged for food and eaten it too. Regardless, we'll need plenty of supplies considering our destination. Where can I find the merchants? What kind of supplies? Yeah, where can I find the merchants? You can't miss them, he says. A group of tents they call a market. What kind of supplies? Stuff like food and meat for the trip. The merchants have got a few interesting items as well, but folks can't eat those in lean times. You'll have to choose wisely, even your renown will only stretch so far. Thanks, Obin. Of course, he says. Oh, almost forgot. There's something ruffling the feathers of the ravens, the mercenaries who followed us from Borsgard. Chat with their liver, Bolverg, but be careful, he's not like other Varro. This medallion gives you information about your caravan, including population, supplies, renown, and the number of days that have passed. This banner indicates that you have enough supplies to provision your caravan for nine days of resting or travel. A larger population requires more supplies per day to survive. Okay. You can acquire additional supplies at this market. Click on the market to see what's available. These are the supplies the merchant has available. It will give you 5 per renown, and you need 12 supplies per day to survive. This shows what you have. Your 111 supplies will last for 9 days. You have 21 renown available to purchase supplies. Okay. Click this button to add 15 or more supplies to your caravan. The area to the left will show how those supplies affect your caravan. Okay. So 11 days. Now that you've added supplies, you must confirm the change by pressing this button. Markets also have items available. These items are equipped by your heroes and can provide a great advantage. The required hero rank is shown in the red circles. Okay, so rank 7, rank 3, rank 10. When finished, exit the market by clicking this button. We do have 18 renown, I suppose. What are these items? 
The discarded scraps of a craftsman can sometimes save a life. Plus 2 arm talent ranks, plus 2 armor on rest, 10% divert arm attacks. I'm not going to buy any of these until I understand what all these modifiers will do. Plus 3 all talent ranks. Yeah, that sounds really good, but it requires rank 10. Plus 1 move, minus 1 drawing aggro, plus 2 strength talent ranks, plus 3 strength attack. Well, plus 3 strength attack is obvious enough. We can go back there later. So, what else can we do? Not a whole lot. Yeah, we can rest, which was probably not necessary, but imp improved our morale. Can we see the exact effects of morale? I guess not. There's no tooltip or anything like that. We can check the map. So, there's the map. Not much to see here. We are only getting started. It's reasonably big. Alright, back we go then. How do we leave? Oh yeah, right here. So let's talk with this guy. The Varl mercenary leader, Bolverg, and the rather large female fighter are talking to Juno, a member of the Spellweaving Menders Council. Bolverg looks annoyed. Nothing unusual. Juno. There is no haggling on this. You already accepted the offer in Borsgard. Bolverg. Get this one to do it. Rogue. Get me to do what? If Juno is surprised by your presence, it doesn't show. She continues to stare straight at the Varl. Juno. Rogue is seeing to the survival of this caravan. Something I doubt you care to do. Volka. He won't be seeing to anything much longer if he keeps fighting like he did earlier. Say nothing, but I'm still here now. Again, what other task are you talking about? Well, I'm still here now. And I'm thankful for that. Your importance to these people can't be overstated. Rook. Okay, but what were you three talking about? Juno. With respect, Rook. That stays between us for now. Her look at Bolverk says she expects him to keep it private. Juno. Avind needs my help with healing the wounded, but we should leave soon. See Hakon at the dock when you're ready. Juno leaves without another word. Bolverk. Find Valka. One of these days, Klo and Fang will get thirsty for Spellweaver blood. Klo and Fang. His axes. The large axe. Heads are polished, the blades sharp and the cheeks scarred from plenty of use, but it's the grey handles that stand out. They are unlike anything you've seen before. How long are you going to let Juno tell you what to do? You avoid his goading. Only to Arberang, then it's King Mainwall's job. Like he's got the answer to any of this. He'd royally piss himself if he ever saw a dredge. The pigtailed fighter laughs. Have we met? I'm Volka. A shield maiden in charge of keeping the ravens alive. Bolverk gives her a stern look, but she doesn't back down. I already know who you are, Chieftain. I heard there's a problem I should know about. Do you have a better idea than Arberang? Yeah, make a new plan. You think some walls and the king is going to save you? Bolverk snorts and turns his attention to a large, sealed card behind him. His very cloaked back indicates the conversation is over. Alright, I guess we won't find out what the problem was all about. Okay. Good caravan morale causes plus one willpower bonus in battle. Oh, that's really nice. Maintain sufficient supplies and rest in camp to improve morale. Alright. Oddleaf, your former chieftain's widow, is demonstrating fletching an arrow to a few people as you approach. Oddleaf, give us a moment, will you? A, the group walks away as Oddleaf stands and wipes loose feathers from her tunic. I doubt you're here to explain your actions with the dredge. Do I need to? It was nothing. I just... I miss Alette. Uh, it was nothing. Running, running into retreating dredge alone is nothing. She recognizes your silence for what it is and changes the subject. I wanted to discuss the clansmen, 
They're good at scavenging for food while we travel, but we could always use more fighters. But training them takes time. I'm not sure we have much of that to spare. Then you'll have to find a balance that works. We're okay for now, but who knows how our needs will change. I see. Thanks. You turn to leave, but Olive places a hand on your shoulder. We should talk, Rook. At some point. Talk about what? You. Not you the leader, but the man I knew from Skogger. She gives you a faint smile and returns to her fledging. Alright. So... What now? The dock, I suppose? The wooden planks of the well-used dock creak as you walk across them. Hakon, a warrior recently acknowledged as king of the Varl, paces on the dock. Not sure I was made for this, he says as you approach. Commanding in battle is one thing, but deciding how many chickens we need to bring? We've both made harder decisions. I'm just as lost as you are on this. You seem to be handling it just fine. I'm not looking for praise, Hakon says. I just want to know what we're expecting when this is all over. There's so few Varl left. How do I keep my people alive? You search for something to say, but he stops you. I'm not looking for an answer from you either. It's something a Varl king should be able to figure out. Let's sail. Well, I guess we are ready, so let's depart. After lighting the funeral pyre, the last villagers find seats on your rickety longships, built of scrap wood scavenged in Bordsgard. The ravens find space around a large cart on their black sail vessel. Oars slowly move all the boats into the river's current. And off we go. So this will use supplies, I assume. <laughs> Obviously. We got almost 600 clansmen, 286 fighters and 211 Val. Our morale is good, we have enough supplies for 10 days. Aleo looks ill. At least it's not the brackish sea, he whispers to himself as he steps around rowers and baggage to speak with you. I'm not sure we were all built for aquatic voyages, he says, and I hear Arberang is quite a distance away. My people could use a few hours rest on solid ground. The hopeful looks from others sway you and you signal for the ships to make land. Would you mind telling me why the capital is our destination? Arberang's walls have never been breached. The Valka Juno says the Menders there can protect us. Is the furthest place away from the dredge. Well, let's go with the first one. Ah, of course. The growing walls should certainly keep a dredge army at bay. Shouldn't they? You say nothing. Dredge, Aloha says almost you know. Men and Varl's storied foe from oh so ever long ago, but they're real and here. How have they made it so far south? His glance at the Varl is met with both anger and shame. The longship rocks gently, and the skald grabs a rope to steady himself. If only we had the fabled horses to ride upon, we'd outpace the dredge and be on sound footing. His dramatized misery is almost as amusing as his thanks when he steps back onto land. In before we get ambushed. I mean, something is obviously going to happen. This is the map of the world. You can explore it by dragging the mouse to pan and using the mouse wheel to zoom. The location of your caravan is indicated by Rook's icon. The caravan recently embarked from Aleo's village and is traveling westward down the Ormsa river. Okay. Prior to arriving at Aleo's village, the caravan has hurriedly embarked from Bordsgard in the wake of the devastating siege laid by Bellower and his armies. Click on Bordsgard to find out more about it. An aging and senile mess of a city that can't remember whether it wants to sell you something or steal everything you've got. While Ormsdar grew early into an important hub of trade, East Twin City Bordsgard became the place to buy things nobody else was willing to hog. Is greatly supported by the potent items harvested in raving and tinsel, and plagued by huge disparities between the extremely rich and the suffering poor. 
Alright. The caravan is attempting to reach Ormsdar by river on the way to Arberan. Click more to find out more. A strom led some of the first men east. Ormsdar was one of the most important places they settled, nested in the crook where all the where the Orms River splits. If Borsgard and Ormsdar were twins, Ormsdar would be the righteous brother trying to keep his evil twin from hurting anyone else. And more cities. Reaching Arberang, the human capital, is the ultimate goal of the caravan. It is hoped that the walls of the ancient city will provide safety against the deepening catastrophe. Click on Arberang to find out more. From humble beginnings to eventual seat of power for the king, Arberang is the most populated and contested city throughout the human lands. Its towering obsidian walls have been pulled from the depths by the weaving power of the Menders. As each new generation of residents builds another ring of walls, the city continues to grow larger, more indulgent and more dangerous. The world map is covered with many locations and holds much lore. You can explore the map at any time, clicking on locations for more information. Yep, we can click anything that can be highlighted. Alright, well, I guess we're done here. You can return to the map at any time during your travel by pressing this button. As you travel through the world, time passes. The number of days passed is shown here. Each time a full day passes, your supplies will be consumed. Morale drops during continuous travel, and when supplies drop low, in order to raise morale, you must camp and allow your caravan to rest. The number of days worth of remaining supplies is shown here. If the caravan has, sufficient, has insufficient supplies, people will begin to starve and morale will drop. In order to maintain morale and heal injuries, you must rest in camp. Furthermore, camping provides you with opportunities to increase your battle prowess and converse with your heroes. Click here to camp. Okay. When a day passes in your camp, your caravan consumes a day's worth of supplies and morale increases. Click the rest tent now. So now our morale is great. At any time, you can visit the hero's tent to inspect and promote your heroes. We did get some promotions from that first fight. Items. Your items are shown at the bottom of the roster. Drag items onto your units to equip them. Items can only be equipped by characters of equal rank. Promote your units to equip higher rank items. Click on an item for more information. Alright. Click on a unit to view unit stats, promote ranks, and learn about abilities. Orleaf. Click on the ability button to learn more about unit's abilities. Reign of Arrows. The Sky Striker secretly selects an unoccupied tile on the board and fires up to three arrows in the air. If an enemy passes through the selected tile, they are hit by the falling arrow, doing normal strength damage and stopping them in their tracks, ending their turn. Oh, that's quite nice. Rain of arrows can be used offensively, defensively to protect allies, and in general is most effective when forcing an opponent to second-guess his actions. Smart use of the ability can potentially lock down an entire team. Alright, well, that's quite nice, yeah. Anchor down. 20% to resist one armor damage, two armor damage, three armor damage. Robust and artery strike. Okay. Close. Willpower, defy, stubborn. Dodge, lucky shot. Okay. Exploit, divert. Right, we don't have any points available on Hertz, so can't do much there. Do we have any points available on anyone at all? I guess we do. Yeah, promote. Only the most elite warriors promote to rank 6 and take on a second ability. Okay, so we can get a second ability at rank 6. So, continue. 
Call to arms. Oh, this is the only choice? Really? Alright, not much of a choice then. The peel of Rook's Warhorn rallies the heroes and calls them to pillage. During pillage, there are no more granted turns, killing an enemy gives the heroes two turns in a row, but the same holds true for the enemy. This calls for wisdom in timing. Well, this is our only choice, so... okay. Are you sure you want to promote for 13 renown? Well, yes. That's the whole point, isn't it? We can also promote... Who was the second person? Oh yeah, Hakon. We can also promote him. Forge ahead. Okay, he has more than one choice. The war leader uses his experience in battle to issue commands to allies, moving them next in line initiative. in initiative. By repositioning his allies' turn order, the war leader can create new strategies, such as giving archers guerrilla tactics, triggering abilities earlier than usual, or slingshotting a powerful ally to the back lines. Tempest. The warhawk using, uses his massive weight to sweep his weapon around himself, hitting multiple adjacent targets, friend or foe, for more normal strength damage. Tempest triggers the warhawk's passive ability, heavy impact, which in turn can cause a chain reaction of destruction if used in close quarters. Keeping the Warhawk out of harm's way until late fight will maximize his effectiveness. So that's actually kind of a tough choice. They both sound very good. It's a tough choice. Well, let's promote Rook because he didn't have much of a choice. So we can only grab Call to Arms? Yes, I'm sure. This unit has points available to spend on improving stats and talents. Activate one of the buttons above. Okay, we have two points available, so what do we want to increase? That's actually not an easy choice at all. We can't raise armor. We would need three points to increase armor. We can get these skills as well. Okay, this is a really tough choice. There's a lot we can improve. Oh wait, we can spend points on armor. Right, we can get maximum of free armor. I thought we need free points to increase this. Robust, 20% to resist one strength damage, bonus crit chance, let's check everything. Hunker down, 20% to resist armor damage, 20% to regen plus one armor per turn, okay. Well, chance to regen armor per turn seems pretty good. 20% to resist strength damage, bonus crit chance, defy, 30% to avoid any killing blow, wow. 20% to regen plus 1 willpower per turn. That also seems pretty good, but it's blocked. We have to max out the stat first. Yeah, we can't actually choose any of these things just yet, but it's worth knowing what they do. 5% to avoid strength attack. 30% bonus hit chance. Okay, I'm not sure what our base hit chance was. But hit chance is generally really good, most of the time, so we can spend one point here. Maybe even two points, but one point. That's 30% bonus hit chance for just one point. And one in armor. Armor seems really damn important, honestly. 5% to avoid armor attack. Or willpower. 50% chance to avoid any killing blow, with maxed out defy. And the chance to regen willpower per turn. Yeah, willpower is nice because it can be used for extra movement or extra damage. Let's get willpower. And confirm. Alright, that's just the explanation of all the stats. We mostly know this all already. 
Oh, break is the amount of direct damage you can naturally do to enemy's armor. Right, so this is break stat, not armor. This up here is armor. Okay. Which means we can get up to 11 armor. Exertion is the amount of willpower you can use on any given action. Kills needed to promote to the next rank. Okay. Well, I think everything is clear here. So there's actually a lot to character development. Right, so next up we got Ivor. Promote. So which ability do we want to go for? Well, Tempest is more situational, but it could potentially do tons of damage. While Forge Ahead is always going to be useful, no matter what. Let's go for Forge Ahead. Oh, he doesn't have enough points. We need 13. Okay, that's fine, I guess. So we won't be doing that. Alright. And Hakon. Forge Ahead Tempest. Yeah, we can't choose that either, because he doesn't have 13. So we can't actually promote them, even though it says we can. Is there any reason to not use every single slot here? We can actually choose turn order. There's a lot to this. Hmm. Right, let's not waste too much time here, but there's actually a lot of strategy involved here. Alright, this will do for now. Don't want to waste too much time on that, we'll have plenty of time to manage our heroes more. Shouted orders turn several ships towards the bank. You have no choice but to call all the other vessels to halt as well. By the time you land, a crowd has gathered by the water. A man in fine clothes and the missing hand stands in the center of the others. He smirks as you approach. And there he is, a fain self-proclaimed ruler of us all. Are you the reason for this delay? I don't answer questions from backwater scum, no matter how high they've risen in the pond. Then I'll stop asking, get back on the boats. Handle this quickly with force. You don't know who you're talking to, do you? Eivind. Uh, Rook, you might not remember when we first arrived in Borsgard, but I went with Bolverk to speak with the governor. Rook, what's your point? Well, this is Roga, the governor. Lodin. The entitled Prince of Arberan, who joined you in Einar Toft, steps forward from the gathering crowd. The former governor, what was Bordsgard, actually. Careful, Prince. Rivers are dangerous, especially this far from your papa's side. The threat causes a few gasps from the clansmen. Lodin's bodyguard, the usually quiet Varl Bercy, grows but is waved off by the young prince. The Mender and I were just discussing Rogue's banner. It will make a nice addition to board's guards. The Mender and I... Right. That's not going to happen. Fine, I don't really care. Doesn't Prince Ludin outrank you? Yeah, that's not going to happen. These aren't the rules of the woods anymore, Rook. You're among men now. Try to act like one. If anything, Rook's banner would join Arborangs. Or are you claiming control of the entire kingdom too? I'm just trying to guide my vulnerable prince home with some dignity and proper leadership. But it was Rook who led the fight against Bellower while you hid in your great hall, Governor. Overseeing a besieged town isn't hiding, Mender, just as fighting in a battle isn't necessarily leading. But Rook kept us alive across the frozen wastes, he did, cries a man. Saved us at Einartov's toe, a woman adds. Others join in. 
listing your deeds and chilling your name. Then it's settled. No more delays. Rock is our official guide to Arberan, but will consult with me on major decisions. I don't want a title or a boss. Everyone just get back on the boats. Yes, return to the ships. The helmeted guard next to Raga makes a gesture for only the governor to see. Raga laughs as the crowd disperses. Prince, your guide has a lot to learn before Arberang. Well, I thought we'll have to fight something there, but... Seems it wasn't necessary. Ahead, Driftwood has collected, creating an impressive barrier for the longships. Alternatively, going ashore has its own risks, from whatever might be lurking in the trees. Row hard will break through, bang the ships, and set all axemen to chopping. We'll carry the ships around. Yeah, carrying the ships around seems like a bit of a pain. <laughs> bang the ships and set all axemen to chopping. Once on land, you, Ivor, and anyone else with an axe start hacking away at the wood blockage. Thudding sounds fill the air. Moments later, Roga says, Damn, we've got company. As the dredge approach from the woods, you realize others will have to hold them off until you have cleared the driftwood. You're about to enter battle. If you find the battles too challenging or difficult, or you will find yourself needing a tougher challenge, you can modify the difficulty settings. Don't worry, you can change the difficulty of battles at any time before the battle begins. To access the difficulty settings, open the options menu, you can click on this button or hit the escape key. Yep, so right now it's on normal. Alright, well, let's fight. Turn order. Units move in the order you place them, from left to right. This initiative order is very important when setting up strategies. For example, put archers after melee units so that they can stay safe behind your heavy hitters. Drag the unit icons to rearrange their turn order. Right, well, let's just read all this. So, we need some heavy hitters. Rank 4 war leader, sure. Gonolf. This guy is a Mender. Trigvi, Spearmaster. What's his ability? Impale. Normal strength damage before kicking them away, doing knockback and causing them to bleed. If they move on their next turn, a character who is bleeding will take one strength damage. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay. Loading. Spearmaster. Well, I guess we'll grab... Spearmaster, Mender, Oddleaf, and we can grab one more person, Raidmaster, Stonewall. The Raidmaster braces for impact with his heavy shield, resisting damage from each strike for the next turn. Each hit the Raidmaster takes to either strength or armor is reduced, preventing him from taking permanent damage to either. The Raidmaster can use Stonewall to rush into a group of enemies and gain a forward advantage or step in the way of a powerful enemy to block his movement with impunity. Well, that sounds quite good. Do we have any other Raidmasters? Okay, Shieldmaster. Bring the pain. The Shieldmaster strikes an adjacent enemy for armor break damage before hunkering down and boosting his passive ability, return the favor, to return even more break damage for one turn. Alright, let's bring Mogger. And that's going to be that. We do have some items. Let's see, 15% dodge strength attacks, plus one drawing aggro. Warhawk, war leader. Plus one move, 10% dodge strength attacks. Plus one move seems useful on the Spearmaster guy. I'm sure I'm going to change things around later. Plus two armor on rest. 15% dodge strength attacks. Plus one arm, plus one strength, plus one will. Okay. 
Wait, which one was that? Oh yeah, 15% dodge strength attacks. We don't necessarily want that on her. Yeah, that seems more useful there. Okay. And I guess that will do. Oh, we have more items. Okay, then. And what's this? Plus three strength. Oh, that's nice. Okay, ready for battle. I assume this is going to be a bigger one than the first. Especially since we got six characters. Okay, well, here we are. During deployment, you can place your units anywhere within blue tiles area. You can select a unit by clicking its tile, blah blah blah, yep. Okay, so we can move around and then ready once we are deployed. So, how do we want to do this? This is going to be like my first proper battle, so... I guess we'll stay in this general area. Okay, ready. We'll see how it goes. We could just wait for them to move towards us. Possibly. Yeah, I guess we can do something like that. And turn. They can't move enough to attack us just yet. Tempest, nope, we certainly don't want that right now. Get that debris cleared, hurry. 15 health or 15 strength and 10 armor. That is a lot of armor. Bring the pain. Oh yeah, breaks enemies' armor and punishes enemies for retaliating. Right. Not going to use that right now. So this guy will go next. He's too far away to do anything. There's our Spearmaster. I don't think he can do much. Well, unless he moves in all the way. That's not necessarily a good idea, I don't think so. We can move a little bit closer. That looks like a ranged guy. Right here. Inferno Slinger. Yep, that's definitely ranged. Dredge, Scourge. Alright. So, we could use Willpower to move more. Might not be worth it. Rain of Arrows. Yeah, I think we could try to place it somewhere around here. Yeah, we could. That's probably a good idea, yeah. Let's do that. So that's a trap, basically. Oh, and there's one more guy on the left. Dredge Grant. Okay, fair enough. Abilities. Arc Lightning. Strength damage that arcs to all diagonal units. Oh, that sounds promising, but we are too far away to actually use it right now. The range on that is pretty good. So he will trigger the trap, like so. Nice. And now we have to start doing some armor damage. Forge ahead, do we want that? Select an ally. Oh yeah, we can select an ally to move that person forward initiative. I thought that was something else. Let's just move in and start doing some damage. We have to do armor damage. That's 10 armor. And now this guy can't move through because he's too fat. That's Tempest. Won't be needing that just yet. So move in. How much damage can we do? 10 damage. Yeah, not much point breaking armor anymore than this. Just do damage. That guy was still too far away. Let's bring the pain. Breaks an enemy's armor. Yeah, we won't be using that right now. Just move to the left towards the ground. And that's pretty much it. 
there's the Infernal Slinger, and he used one point of willpower. And this will explode, I assume. Yep, explodes, causing two strength armor damage. Okay. Trig V. I assume we can kill this guy right now. But do we want to move in like this? I guess it should be fine. Famous last words. So we can use Impale now. Or we can use a regular attack. So he's down. And we got promoted. Here comes the Grunt. And Odd Leaf. We can still use Rain of Arrows if we want to. This is a hazard. To avoid it, you can carefully plan your movement by clicking waypoints, tile by tile, and confirming your move. Okay. Like this. Right, but we aren't moving just yet. So, Reign of Arrows again. They will have to move through it. This tile or this tile? This one. If they try to attack the guy who already took a little bit of damage. Yeah, if they try to attack... What's this guy's name? Gonolf. Right? No. That's the guy whose turn it is now. What's this dude's name? Well, it doesn't matter. If they try to move towards this guy, they will take damage from the Rain of Arrows. So, abilities. Mend, Arc Lightning. Restore allies' armor. Arc Lightning. So, if we attack this guy with Arc Lightning, it will spread to the Slinger, I assume. That seems like a good idea to me. Well, let's move a little bit closer first. And we could use more willpower. Let's just use all of it. The battle horn fills with stars as you defeat enemies. Click this button to... I didn't have enough time to read that. Well then. Does that activate pillage mode? I didn't have enough time to read that. I guess we'll find out. So I should move out of the way now because this will blow up if I stay here. And I probably don't want it to blow up in my face. I'm just saying. Yeah, I don't want it to blow up in my face. That sounds like a terrible idea. Forge ahead. Select one adjacent right. We can move one person forward initiative. There. Forge ahead. So that actually blow up on the dredge. Free armor damage. And now we could use Rain of Arrows again. But where exactly now? Or we could just attack. I suppose that might be better. Two damage. Not a whole lot. And one armor damage. Now I think the special attack will be better here. We could place it over here. Sounds good enough. One armor damage. Gonolf, right, so that was this guy. We could probably kill the big guy. He's down to 8 health. Yep, let's do that, just don't trigger the trap, obviously. I assume you can do friendly fire with that. But I'm not sure, don't want to test that. We can almost kill him, but not quite. If I had more willpower, I could kill him. I don't think it's worth using willpower here to do 7 instead of 6. We'll just hit him, and we can kill him with our next attack. It's still worth doing damage, because now he can only do 2 damage. Because, as you probably remember, strength is also... Like, strength is both health and attack damage. So... That was bring the pain. What was that? Oh yeah, breaks enemies armor. I think we should use that, yeah. There, down to free armor. That was pretty good. And what is that supposed to be? What the heck is he doing? I have no idea what he's doing, but I do not like it. 
Let's kill him. I do not like it at all. Here. Plus one renown. I kind of like this class already. And I like the Reign of Arrows. So, Avind. Arc Lightning Mend. Not much point using Arc Lightning. We'll just use a standard attack. Wait, do we actually have a standard attack? That's our melee with the staff. I mean, that will still do some damage, so whatever. We can actually kill this guy. Yeah, that's worth doing for sure. Down he goes. Six damage. Well, he's still fine, but we might want to help him out a bit. Or heal him. So this guy is going to move next. And then this guy. Okay. Well. Yeah, I think we have to do some damage to the Scourge. Because otherwise, Trig V might actually die. Can we do damage to him? Not from this far away. Old Leaf will have to handle that. So, will this do friendly fire damage? I have no idea. Not sure if I want to test that. I kind of don't, honestly. We can use Forge Ahead, however. So... Forge Ahead for Gonolf. That makes sense. He has 14 strength. So now the Slinger will move. Or whatever he's called. Inferno Slinger. Okay, and now we have to attack the Scourge. Or the Dredge. The Dredge Scourge. You know what I'm talking about. Tempest doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah, I can't do a whole lot of damage because he has 10 armor. We'll just do some armor damage. That's the best we can really do. Okay. So, what the heck can we do with this? I'm still a little bit confused. The active unit... Oh, that restores willpower or what? I didn't have enough time to read the description of the horn area. Which is kind of annoying. Alright, well... We have to break more armor. Let's just break as much as possible, like so. Deflect, nice. Bring the pain. Yeah, that's not useful when we're too far away. I think someone is going to die. I'm not sure how we can prevent that. We can't prevent that, I don't think so. There. So I assume he's like dead forever or what? I'm not sure how that works, I guess we'll find out. Abilities, mend. I think we need that. Wait. That didn't work like I thought it will. Doesn't matter, let's move. Kill this guy. And now we will enter pillage mode because there's just one enemy left. Okay. Just maximize the damage. I don't want anyone else to die if it's not necessary. So is our guy dead or does he just need to rest or something? <laughs> you hear the axemen cheer as the blockage of wood breaks up and disappears down the river, but the dredge have regrouped. One of them looks especially menacing. The fighters around you are tired, but could buy everyone in else enough time to safely board the ships. Get to the ships, continue to stand your ground with those around you. Get to the ships. You and your fighters turn and run, leaping for the long ships at the river's edge. Slinger rocks knock against the shields and a few helmets, but the ships move away. Everyone is safe until a glowing rock lands on the bow of a rib ship. The explosion kills a few. The river kills the rest. Minus 28 clansmen. Minus 12 fighters, minus 2 var. Morale declined. Your renown grows. Tempered by... Oh, okay. So they don't die. That's good. 
we got promotions. And plus 12 renown. Alright. Some of our heroes are injured. So we just have to rest, I take it. We might make it down this river to the capital without any more trouble. You look at Ivor, surprised by his optimism. And I might sprout wings and start flying. What that make up for your missing arm? Hey, I get to make jokes about losing my arm, not you. I suppose that's fair. So what are you worried about now? I think you should make use of this trainer and his tent. You've led fighters in battle before, but there's always more to learn. So let's bank the ships and challenge your skills a bit. Alright. This training tent is where you can hone your skills by completing challenges and through freeform sparring. Click on the training tent to begin your first challenge. I want to check the heroes first, so let me do that. Injuries. One or more of your units is injured. Injured units can still fight, but have a penalty to max strength equal to the number of days wounded. They heal as time passes when resting in camp. Okay, so he's injured for two days. And Gonolf is injured for three days. Alright. And, right, that's that. But this episode is a little bit long now, so I'm going to make a cut here and continue in the next one. Let me know if you enjoyed the first episode. Your feedback is always really important for me on any new games I do on the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.